In this video, we will look at the factors that affect the rate of transpiration and why. So first off, we have temperature. Now, temperature increases the rate of transpiration. Now, let's try to understand what happens when there's an increase in temperature outside the plant. What we see on the slide is a section through a leaf. You can see the spongy mesophyll, the palisade mesophyll, and then we have the stomata at the lower epidermis. And here you can see some water vapor molecules represented. So basically what happens with an increase in temperature is that this increases the kinetic energy of the water molecules, meaning that they now move faster, they collide more frequently with one another, and this causes water vapor to diffuse out of the stomata faster. Conversely, if we decrease the temperature outside, it's a colder day, it means that the kinetic energy of the water molecules will be far less, meaning that they don't move as fast, they don't bump into each other as often, so therefore less water vapor will escape through the stomata through diffusion. Light intensity has exactly the same effect as temperature because light intensity affects temperature. We all know how a light bulb can exude heat and therefore light intensity also causes a higher light intensity also causes an increase in the rate of transpiration. And additionally, on very hot sunny days, photosynthesis will also be occurring maximally, meaning that the stomata will be open maximally and more water vapor could be lost through that stomatal pore. Now, wind is another factor that affects transpiration. So if we have an increased wind speed, let's see what happens. As we have water vapor being lost through the stomata, the wind is actually blowing the water vapor away from the surface of the leaf, which means that we continuously have this very high diffusion gradient with a high water vapor concentration on the inside of the leaf because that's where it's accumulating due to transpiration pull. And now due to the wind, we're continuously removing water vapor from the surface of the leaf, creating a lower water vapor concentration on the outside. So this is a diffusion gradient. And because the wind is continuously removing water vapor from the surface, the gradient remains very steep and therefore the rate of transpiration will be very high. Conversely, if the wind uh, speed slows down, again, we will have less water vapor being removed from the surface of the leaf. So it won't be removed as frequently. It could be allowed to build up a bit, therefore reducing the steepness of the diffusion gradient and thereby reducing the rate of transpiration. In terms of sunken stomata, which is a very nice adaptation that some xerophytic plants have, meaning that the epidermis kind of bulges inwards, creating this little indent here where the stomata are located in the sunken area, they actually protect a xerophytic plants against excessive water loss through transpiration because they can trap water vapor inside that sunken cavity and therefore the wind will not actually blow the water vapor away as frequently, meaning that this diffusion gradient will be equal more often than not. And so sunken stomata is a very awesome adaptation of many plants that want to limit their water loss. The last factor that can affect the rate of transpiration is humidity. And this is the only factor that does so in the opposite way. So a high humidity actually decreases the rate of transpiration compared to all the other factors where a high temperature or a high wind speed or a high light intensity increases the rate of transpiration. Now, why is this the case? So if we have a very low humidity outside, meaning the air is not humid, it is very dry, we can see that there is a lack of water vapor on the outside of the leaf, but because of transpiration pull, water is continuously pulled into the leaves and accumulates in the intercellular spaces of the spongy mesophyll. Now, because there is a very low concentration of water vapor on the outside of the leaf and a high concentration on the inside, we have a fairly steep gradient for diffusion to occur. So transpiration will occur very fast. Low humidity increases the rate of transpiration. Now we're going to see what happens as we increase the humidity. So here we're looking at a situation where there is no water vapor outside, so it's very, very dry air, and there's a very high diffusion gradient. If we now have an increase in humidity outside, 
we've added a little bit of water vapor, we can see that the gradient now becomes less steep, this diffusion gradient, so therefore the rate of transpiration slows down. Increase the humidity even more, we can see the rate of transpiration slow even more. And if we have very high humidity outside, transpiration might stop completely. And this can happen in very, very humid areas like Durban, where we would then have the plant getting rid of excess water through other means like agutation, where specialized structures on the leaf um, lamina called hydrosodes allow water to be lost in its liquid state because the plant is still absorbing water but needs to get rid of the excess. So hopefully you now understand how different factors affect the rate of transpiration.